<laughs> but uh, I'm going to read you a few poems from the book I'm writing now for younger people, and then a few from my last book, which is a slightly older and um, up to our And this one is Chameleon. A chameleon sees 360 degrees and pinches along habitat. He'll spot you with ease, though you hide in the leaves, for his eyes swivel this way and that. If he sees you, his long tongue will seize you as quick as a spring you will splat. Then he'll gulp, chew and squeeze too as by degrees you are swallowed. And then that is that. Uh, this one's about baby hair, uh, known as a leveret, which is left all day by its mother and a little scrape in the ground until the evening when she comes back to feed it. Leveret. His coverlet sky, he nestles flat there, ears lowered over his stillness and stare, till dark wraps the stars, safe hidden where he's a patch of earth fur, this little brown hair. Hope buzzard or owl don't suddenly air, his only defence is his stillness and stare. The fox and the stoat keep them unaware, the grass has a heartbeat, a little brown Uh, this is a poem about a frog that has a, a, an unusual life cycle. The paradoxical frog. The ambition of all frog spawn in any pond or bog is to change from tiny tadpole into a fine, fat frog. But to be a giant tadpole is quite unorthodox. And to grow into a smaller frog, well, that's a paradox. about a little Australian marsupial which you may not have seen because I certainly hadn't. It's a tiny wallaby-like creature that eats grass and regurgitates it to chew like a, a cow chews cud. It's quite a chubby little thing and it's got a sweet welcoming smile, so welcoming that it's been caught and eaten by both Australian well, indigenous and introduced wildlife and now it's very rare. <clears throat> Quokkas. Quokkas are marsupial and sleep while it is hot. They have a hopping habit, a small and smaller lot. Those Australian dingoes will scoff them on the trot. Oz was chock a block of crockers, but now they're hard to spot. Uh, this one's about the bonobo chimpanzee, which you probably know. Um, they have a rather more friendly social life than ordinary chimpanzees. Sex in the Congo, sorry. <laughs> they live in a remote part of the Congo Basin in Africa and they're endangered. It's a wish poem, really. Bonobo. Oh, so small, Bonobo, while you grow big and strong. May your eyes stay bright with wonder. May your days all start with song. May your fruits be plump and sunlit. May flowers bend each stem. May your air be full of butterflies. May your forest never end. May danger stay as far away as the sun that sends you light. May your mother's arm curl round you like petals in the night. None of my friends are very long. <laughs> Extra short. Um, this is glass frog. This little frog, um, hang a second, I'll just pick it up. I think it's in... Uh, The Amazonian slopes of the Ecuadorian Andes is the whole chap lives on. And um, you can actually see right through him to his heart and his intestines. Glass frog. With frosted glass hands glistening on stems green as his green, and eyes of golden amber polished to a gleam. Glass frog is transparently safe to sit and dream, camouflaged by clarity. By his forest stream. Okay. Not sure what I've got here. Sorry. <laughs> Might read what a couple of what I read the 
Um, I'm a chameleon. These are for younger people, if you weren't here before. Chameleon. A chameleon sees 360 degrees and pinches a long habitat. He'll spot you with ease though you hide in the leaves, for his eyes swivel this way and that. If he sees you, his long tongue will seize you. As quick as a spring you will splat. Then he'll gulp, chew and squeeze too, as by degrees you are swallowed. And then, that is that. I read this one against fat baby hair. Leverett, which is left all day by its mother in the scrape in the ground until when, when she comes back to feed it in the evening. Leverett. His coverlet sky, he nestles flat there, ears lowered over his stillness and stare, till dark wraps the stars, safe hidden where he's a patch of earth fur, this little brown hair. Hope buzzard or owl notes up in the air, his only defence is his stillness and stare. The fox and the stoat, Keep them unaware. The grass has a heartbeat, a little brown hair. Um, this is about a gastric brooding frog. There are two of these have been found, in, both of them in Australia, in the Angela um, region, which is why it's called the Angela gastric brooding frog. And unfortunately, the last time they were seen was in the 1970s, so I think they're both extinct now. But um, they have an absolutely unique way of uh, reproducing. The Angela mother swallows her spawn, her stomach a womb till her froglets are born, waits weeks without food until one by one her froglets emerge, leapfrogging her tongue. During this childbirth, she can't croak a note. As a matter of fact, there's a frog in her throat. <laughs> um, actually, um, female frogs don't croak normally, so I sort of <laughs> fudged that a bit. <laughs> this is about panda, um, which isn't quite as cute as you'd think. Um, uh, there's a, a place in China where they look after them and um, they had one panda that had been uh, reared that, that got a taste for meat and it used to chase out of the, where it was being kept and chase goats with the local uh, farmers and they actually um, quite fast apparently and it could catch them. Panda. The black-eyed panda eats bamboo. He spends all day with piles to chew. It's all you see a panda do. But should snow hide his stems from view, too frozen stiff to nibble through, he'll snack on leaves and bamboo rat. I bet you didn't expect that. This is one I wrote a few days ago. Um, it's about a sea lion. Uh, stellar sea lions are endangered. California sea lions are not. There's plenty of them. But this poem refers to any sea lion that may have been taken out of its environment. Sea lion. All of the sea lion talks of the ocean, the sea in its name, the sea in its motion. And even on shore it heaves from the foam, salt crusted grey with the swells of its home. And you see in its eyes not one liquid wish to balance a ball or clap flippers for fish. These are very short. We did time them last night to come to, come to them. Um, this is part of another book I'm doing actually for older people with a photographer who's got not got a home yet. Tiger. You who are meant as part of the forest, marked in each sleek stretch the soft poured pace, bold black like the living trees against the sun. No matter how deep you go, as each tree falls, your stripes, your bones also. Um, this is for that same book. Um, we've got three cones in our eyes which see red, blue and green light and all mixes of them. But birds have a fourth cone that sees a UV light. 
And so they see a spectrum of UV that we will never be able to see, and we don't know what it looks like at all. And all mixes of those UV colours with red, green and blue light as well. So they see an enormous, a millions probably, colours. Uh, and we have absolutely no idea what they look like. The secret of birds. In the blue of a feather is another. Variations indiscernible, but not to birds. Invisible in-betweens of every green and green and red and blue. Colour is light. They see UV, a secret universe of hue. No wonder bird song overflows, dizzy and sky. Bird is your song of colour trails. Hondurian rainforest has been cut down to a rate of 102,000 hectares a year, and this little silver beetle lives in it. The scientists argue over whether it's shiny, so it looks like a drop of water, so it looks like a, sh a raindrop in a, in a forest full of reflections, or if, whether it reflects what's around it and is camouflaged like that. Mirror beetle. I am the colour of all that I see. The leaves changing colour also change me. And so when I rest, and then when I fly, I am the branches, I am the sky. This is the penultimate poem, the Alaskan wood frog. Um, it lives in Alaska, where snow's all winter, and there's no food for it to live on, so it had to take action if it wanted to live until the uh, next year. So it freezes for three months in temperatures colder than your household freezer, and comes alive again in the spring. his hands and feet, elbows and knees. His eyes and brain and blood are chilled. His steam's breath and heart are stilled. As frog turns ice, it's hard to know what is the frog and what is snow. Yet when the snow ponds melt, they bring this little frog awake to spring. And this is uh, the last one for all you redheads out there. Can't see any here. Oh, really. Orangutan. A heavy hulk and tum like mine, in shades of hairy clementine, means when I'm up my forest tree, I live my whole life gingerly 